Hey guys, welcome to the intro to the Linux terminal part 1.5 addendum type thing. If you hadn't noticed, I posted a video on my main channel about a day and a half ago called the intro to the Linux terminal part 1. Well, I got quite a few questions from that one, as I expected, and I wanted to just get a couple of updates here and just, just to give a little bit more information that I didn't quite give in that first video that I probably should have. Uh, first question was from Ibereth1212 and M. Hernandez, the guy who spells his name kind of funny with lots of numbers. The question was, why would you want to use the terminal instead of a GUI? Well, in a lot of cases, there are not GUI programs for doing a lot of things. For navigating, yes, there's been a GUI for a very long time for that. For a lot of other things, there aren't GUIs available yet. They just haven't been made yet, and they may never be made. The other reason, of course, is using the mouse, picking it up, and actually moving it around. It takes your brain telling your hand to move that mouse, to move that invisible cursor around the screen to find what you're looking for. Whereas, doing the typing, your brain is telling your hands exactly what to type, and within a couple of seconds you can be done. Whereas, you can spend minutes and, and sometimes even hours looking through the, through the uh, menus trying to find exactly what you're looking for. So it's, uh, for a lot of people, it's a matter of convenience. For myself in particular, it's just easier for some people to go in and type in a couple of commands from memory than to try to fight through menus and find things that move around on occasion. The second question actually comes from a guy named King Herring. He's actually in my IRC channel all the time. He's on my forum, all sorts of fun stuff like that. Well, he says, I mentioned where the terminal location is in Ubuntu, but that's not necessarily the case in other distros. That's exactly correct, and I completely forgot to mention it. Within Fedora, you go into Applications, System Tools, and find the terminal under there. And actually, a lot of distros have a root terminal that you can open as well. So if you need advanced permissions, if you need to be able to do things as the root user, you would run that root terminal and be able to do that. So just keep in mind, it might not be under Applications Accessories. It might be under Applications System Tools. On some distros, I think it's under the System menu. It depends on what distro you're using. They should all come with a terminal of some sort, though, because it is kind of necessary. A very recent comment from user DRM Giver actually said, what about tab completion? I did mention it very, very briefly in the video that if you're typing something and you hit the tab key, it will complete it. I should probably go into more depth on that. If you're typing anything, if you're typing in the letter L and you hit tab, it's going to say, there are this many possibilities that start with the letter L. Which one do you want? If, for example, you were to type in F, I, and hit tab, it would look through your system for any commands that start with the letters F and I, and then it would display those for you. Or if there's only one, it will go ahead and fill in that for you. It's all a matter of experimenting with it and just sort of learning how it works. It's really a matter of convenience, and if you want to use it, that's great. You don't necessarily have to, though. User Synapsis50 mentioned, I forgot to talk about case sensitivity. Yes, if you're in the Linux terminal, you have to type in everything exactly as it is on the folder name, on the command name, whatever it is you're trying to access. So, for example, if I were trying to type in Firefox and I typed in a capital F for Firefox, it's not going to work because the Firefox command starts with a lowercase f. Alternately, if I'm trying to get into my desktop folder and I'm sitting at the home directory and I type in cd space desktop with a lowercase d, it's not going to work because desktop starts with a capital D. Now the way to figure out which one you really need to use, as far as commands, a lot of that is just knowing the command names. You might try, if you know what the command is actually called, you try it with a lowercase character and do tab completion. If it doesn't work, try it with a capital letter and see if it works. As far as directories and file names, if you do an ls to list the contents of the directory or an ls to find whatever directory you're looking for, it will actually show you the directory and you have to type it exactly as it is there. So if you had alternating caps, you have to make sure you have it that way. That's where tab completion becomes very, very handy because sometimes there will be a directory that has four uppercase letters and then some lowercase and then up, and it can be very confusing. So start typing it, hit tab, it should complete the rest for you. And continuing on that whole tab completion idea, RushJR08 mentioned that what if you're trying to get into a directory with a space in it? Very good point. Now the way you'd normally deal with a space in Linux is every time there's a space, you would replace it with an escaped space character, meaning a backslash and then the space character. The other way that you can do it, of course, is to put the whole thing in quotation marks. So if I had a file that was called Jordan1 and it had J-O-R-D-A-N space the number one, I would have to actually put quote Jordan space one or Jordan backslash space one, and then that would take care of it for me. Pretty much the same way that it works with the Windows command line, if you give it a, something with a space in it, it doesn't always figure it out. The username the links SWE mentioned that you don't have to use the dash F to remove a directory. Uh, that's something that I'd seen used a lot of times, I've used it a lot of times. If it's not necessary, that's cool. 
it's just worked very well for me in the past. Dash F says force, so I mean, if you don't want to be forceful, you don't have to do it. And on that same topic, Lejeunecom, I don't know how to spell that, but I will have links to all these people in the show notes below. He actually mentioned using RMDIR instead of RM-RF because it's safer. Now the way that he mentioned it though is if you want to do the directory and all of the subdirectories, you have to do an RM whatever directory slash star to remove everything under it, and then rmdir to get it to remove everything at that level. That being two commands, it's going to be more complicated. It may work for some people. I would prefer just to do it the way that I suggested, rm-r or rm-rf. But that's all for the addendum that we've got here. Thank you guys so much for pointing out the mistakes that I might have made. Thank you for pointing out the additions that I need to be making. Uh, look forward to part two coming next Monday. I will try to have that up as early as possible on Monday. But as always, thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to this channel and to my other channel, This Week in Linux. Thanks, and I will talk to you later.